Hey guys, how's it going? Ryan Dossey here, and I want to welcome you to our first case study. Now, I plan on going back and actually doing these retroactively on all of the rentals that we've bought here in Indianapolis. This is my first one. This is actually my first buy and hold deal that we bought here in Indianapolis. Um, we had some in St. Louis before we moved. This one in particular, we've owned since November of 2017. It took about two months to get it remodeled least. Um, at this point, we've actually been running cash flowing for about a year. So what does an A-class rental bring in uh, in a year? Uh, this one in particular anyway. So I'm going to walk you guys through our numbers on the deal, what we thought it was worth, what it's worth now, lead source, um, you know, holding costs, all that good stuff. So you can really get kind of a good idea of what kind of money are you actually going to make on just one single family. Um, this is, this is new for me. Uh, it's actually the first time I'm seeing this data, so it's pretty neat. It's pretty easy to kind of make like the monthly calculations and assume, but we prefer to look at things on a 12-month basis so you can really get a good idea of, hey, what kind of work did we have to do to this thing? So on this particular house, we actually got a really good deal. Um, we bought it for 95,000. At the time, retail comps in the area were about 160, 165. Um, we ended up putting right at $10,000 into the property with our contractors. If you remember my previous video about how doing bird deals can screw you, if you just go 75% minus repairs, we had like 2,600 bucks in holding costs before we got this thing leased up. And that's just in interest payments to our private lender. There was about another $1,100 worth of utilities that we had to pay for the time that it was just sitting. Um, after closing costs, paying our acquisitions team, marketing, all of that good stuff, we ended up into this house for right at $123,000. Now, with our private lender, we actually got a $121,000 loan. So we've really only got about $2,300 worth of sunk cost in this thing so far. Now, on the property, we've been cash flowing for a year. Uh, we actually brought in $16,310 just in regular rent. But on top of that, we also charge a monthly pet fee that pulled in another 500. So 16,810. With our private lenders, we pay 8% interest only. On this particular deal, um, we had right at $10,400 in private lender payments. So our net income for the past 12 months on this property has actually been 2,429 bucks, right at $200 a month. Definitely can't complain about that, right? Um, I wanna show you guys though, uh, a lesson that I really learned on this. So this was my first one I leased, and I'd always heard people say, you know, hey, if they don't pay the sewer bill, the county can actually put a lien on your property. So we paid for the sewer bills on our first couple properties and then learned about the time that our uh, residents got their first bill that, hey, water and sewer are actually one bill. So we ended up getting stuck with water and sewer on a couple properties. This one in particular, we had $204.72 worth of sewer charges. So had we initially pushed that off onto our resident, which is what we do now, we would have cash flowed an extra 10%. Uh, that's a lot when you look at the course of a portfolio. So that's definitely a big takeaway I had there. Something else I want to point out. Um, we had right at $1,500 worth of management fees that we charged to our partnership for accounting purposes. We do have a full-time admin. We have a full-time leasing. Um, and we also have a full-time maintenance guy. So they have to get paid somewhere. Yes, we're doing it ourselves. So in theory, it should be cheaper than hiring a property manager at say 10%. In actuality, in our experience, it really doesn't work out that way. Um, we had 300 bucks in HOA fees. This is a nice house in a good neighborhood. Um, so that's to be expected. No real issues with the HOA or anything. Um, and then we had only $127.68 worth of maintenance. Um, from my recollection, it was something small like a toilet or plumbing, something, something relatively minor. Um, so over the course of 12 months, 2,400 bucks in cash flow, we're still getting the depreciation benefits. And then once we've completed our refinance, which we're working on right now, um, we're going to be able to also get that equity paid out. So definitely a ton of benefit there. 
Now, what really surprised me actually when I was preparing for this video is just what this property is worth now. So when we initially ran comps, the average was right at 165. There were some that were higher, some that were a little bit lower, but kind of the going rate, which is what we go off of, was 165. This property is relatively nice, was built in 2004, three beds, two and a half baths, great school district, a little park in the community, honestly, a pretty solid place to live. Pulling comps though, in our subdivision now, um, in the past six months, there's been one, two, three, four sales. So one sale, 182, second sale, 180, third, 181, and then we have an outlier at 210. This has the median value on this property that we'd pegged for 165 at 187 just 14 months later. So we were already in a position where we were gonna be able to burr out of this thing really pretty easily. We're now at the position where it looks like we may actually get some cash back on this when we send it to a bank. Now, as promised, just giving you guys numbers doesn't really give you anything actionable other than you know maybe what to expect on a deal like this. So this particular property, we have the number one ranking We Buy Houses site in Indianapolis, came through our site. It's Christopher Ellen Holmes, E-L-L-Y-N Holmes, H-O-M-E-S dot com. If you wanna check it out, it was just an organic SEO lead, came in to call Porter and basically said, hey, I want 120 grand. So honestly, her asking price really wasn't bad from the get-go. Um, said it just needed some miscellaneous drywall repair. Now, ultimately what had happened, her teenage son took his fists to pretty much any solid piece of drywall in the house. He actually also broke a sink. Um, she claims he punched it. I don't know, I hadn't seen it before. Um, so on this particular property, I mean, it was a really easy rehab. We did carpet, paint, we replaced an exterior air conditioning unit, and then there was a sliding glass door that one of the panes had broken that we repaired. Um, so really a pretty easy, pretty straightforward deal. Came to us, call Porter team, fielded the initial phone call, booked an appointment, we went out. There was a little bit of back and forth between our acquisitions guys, but really nothing terrible. Um, the cool thing with this deal though, I actually did a separate video on how we got it funded. The particular document we used to sell our private lender on this that I'm gonna link to in the description. Let me know what questions you guys have. We're gonna be, getting, we're gonna be putting these out in addition to kind of our regular content. Um, happy to go into anything, answer any questions, give you guys any tips that we possibly can. Um, thank you for subscribing and following along. Talk to you next time.